What about you? Alfa Romeo 1.4 Turbo. This one's a wee Giulietta with 75,000 miles on the clock. It's a 2011 model year, so it's uh, 10 years old. It's 2021, time of shooting this. And we're going to do the basics of a time of belt change. Okay, so the data that I have, uh, the recommend is 72,000 miles for a time belt change on these 1.4s or five years. Now this car is 10 years old and there's 75,000 miles on it, so that's why we're going to do a time belt on it. Uh, so it's just a routine maintenance. The big thing about it is, uh, you know, you need to do the whole lot, change the tensioner, Change the water pump, you can buy them in a kit, and it's not, the kit is not there. Uh, this thing here we're looking at is the timing tools. Now, there's probably videos on YouTube showing this type of uh, procedure, and people just tip axe it up, and away they go. Now, to be quite honest with you, in my opinion, if you do it in that way, there's... I can't see how it's timed right if you do it like that. Um, we'll see later on in the video and you know, we'll maybe show the reason why I say that or I am saying that. So this wee kit here is available on the Amazon store. It's about 30 quid at the time of shooting and it does a multitude of engines. Uh, so we're not going to need that and that. These would be for the 1.2 engine. That's a flyweed locker there. We're not going to need that. We're not going to need that bio there. But we are going to need that uh, small tennis bat and uh, a few wee screws. So, first tail we kit there does a few engines. So this video isn't going to show you the whole thing. It's just going to show you the uh, how to tame it up, really. Now, uh, you know, as you can see, the, the engine supported. So I have the, the engine mount off and a few other bits and pieces removed. And uh, it's just to show you the sort of basics of this. And uh, let's see, we'll get you up to there. So that's our, our crank wheel. So I'm gonna say there, there's no markings in this. Um, and I'm gonna sort of contradict myself a wee bit because there is this marking but it doesn't correspond to anything. There's no markings on the camshaft wheel at all, which is up there. Uh, this mark here, you can see it sort of roughly lines up with that sort of mold line there. But, you know, why that's there, it, it doesn't actually need to be there. What sort of is important is this wee spud here. So if I offer, offer the crank pulley, up to this, we can see that wee spud keeps that in position, and that wee spud is crucial. And you know, you sort of need to treat this wee spud. It is tiny, but you need to treat it with a bit of respect. You do not want to flatten that, you know, or crush it by putting the, the tool on in the, in the wrong way, you know, or putting this crank wheel on in the wrong way. And I don't know whether the, the bolts will line up incorrectly or not. It may only go on one way, but uh, it doesn't matter anyway. The wee spud is the important thing. So, as you can see, your uh, teeth there for your crank position sensor, which is to the right of the picture, that thing. And that's looking at that teeth, the, the tooth wheel there. And we can see there's our missing teeth, which we see in scope captures. So the orientation of that is crucial and it's that wee tiny wee spud. That wee tiny wee spud that, that puts that in the right position. So the camshaft wheel has no markings on it at all. And this cam wheel is not keyed. So this bolt is just holding that to the camshaft with friction. So if you loosen that bolt, this can rotate and the secret of timing this correctly is you do indeed loosen this bolt. So all we have 
is a tensioner, an automatic tensioner, and the water pump, and that's all this belt does. You can see a bit of wear on the back side of it there. It's the original belt on this car. And, oh yes, these belts aren't really known for snapping. You know, clearly, if you if you don't if you never change this belt, it'll probably let go sometime. But the water pumps, they are known uh, for the the burns to fail, and you know that uh, water pump then will rattle about, and that will throw the belt down. Over here on the right hand side of the engine, this is the this is the battery tray. I have the battery removed, and there's a boost pipe that goes sort of past here, and onto the. Uh, I don't know if you, you can't really see it uh, under the intake there, there's a throttle body. So I have a few bits and pieces removed here. You know, you don't normally need to take a battery out. It's probably advisable to disconnect the battery. Uh, I have the boost bait completely removed. Real reason for that, it gives me buckets of room, but it, you know, you don't really need to do that. But I have other work to do in this car. And uh, for the purposes of filming, it's, it sort of helps as well. So. Over here uh, is where this by here lives, which is the vacuum pump, and the vacuum pump bolts on to there, you know, and uh, there's associated bracketry and stuff like that around it, and uh, it bolts on to this uh, oil separator and PCV. So we get the vacuum pump off, and that's how we're going to lock the car. And with the vacuum pump off, then this is what we see. So the slot there is the is the driver, the thing that drives the vacuum pump, up by there. So that's what we're going to use to lock this camshaft. And there's also this wee hole here, it's a wee pinhole thing. And that helps us uh, make sure our uh, locking tool is in place. Now I have this in position. And you can see the wee hole here is on the left hand side. Now some locking tools uh, have the wee a pin that corresponds to that hole. Uh, they have it on the other side, and you need that hole in on the other side. But that's okay. You just rotate the crank, you know, one more time, and that'll get that over to this side. Doesn't really matter. So the tool that I that I have in this kit is this by here. So you can see that triangular shape that the uh, the, the the gasket's still on it there, the vacuum pump gasket. And uh, the tool that comes in that blue box is this by here. And as I say, some of these type of tools with this triangular thing, you know, there's just a welded piece on here. But this particular one, you know, is, uh, is, is screwed on, is bolted on there. So you can loosen that and keep that a wee bit, let it jiggle a wee bit. Because getting this timed up, especially on the crank, it's precise, you know. So... And as I say, there's a pin here, and uh, some tools have the pin on the other side, but it doesn't make any difference what side it's on, so as long as you line it up. So we just offer that up into the camshaft, and this uh, should be in position for me, so we'll get that on, hopefully. Maybe. There we go. So... With well, these slightly loose then, it sort of helps with that. And then the three Allen key uh, bolts that we've got in the kit, we can get them screwed in. And so the wee bit of movement there, you see that tiny wee bit of movement? Because these are slightly loose, you know, it just allows this to align rather than the, uh, the welded up ones, you know. So we'll get them in, and uh, just a, a wee nip then, and everything, and that's our that's our camshaft held. Let me see, where's the wee onky? That's it. So you don't need to just nip them up, you know. Don't need to go mad with it. But uh, if she's out the slightest wee bit, you know, a thigh or a mill or whatever, you can run the risk of stripping something in this aluminium head. And uh, 
That's why I like this one that allows the bolts to be loose. The ladder line up. Jobs again. So lock of the crankshaft in. It, it basically uh, what we're going to do is lock the crank pulley to this part here, which is uh, you know one of the mountings for the plastic cover, and uh, so that's till is made to go on it. However, the only thing about it is uh, you know this is it has to be dead in line with this you know so you could strip that out if you're not exactly in line. It's, you know, pretty precise. So again, well, the way I want to do it is you put the three bolts in uh, and the crank pulley wheel, um, keep them loose. And there's a hole in this tool for the wee spud that we'll talk about earlier. So I'll just give it a wee nip. So that's the engine locked, both uh, camshaft and crankshaft. So we've still got our belt on at the minute, and uh, the crank is locked, and the camshaft is locked with our locking tools. So you can do this next bit. What we need to do is slacken this nut. Now you can go ahead, you can go ahead at this moment in time and take the belt off if you wish. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but you can slacken it now if you want, uh, just to while the belt's still on it. But the camshaft locking tool is not a camshaft holding tool, so you need to counter hold this pulley. And uh, yeah, so if you don't do that, well, you'll probably break the locking tool, uh, to be honest with you, or you're on the risk of snapping the camshaft. So this is my favorite counter hole tool, which is made by myself. But it's my favorite one because it's nice and long. And I'm going to counter hold it and slacken this nut. So we'll see how it goes. That's enough, just enough to crack it. Now we're going to take a belt off. Alright, so we can go ahead and uh, loosen our tensioner. Bolt nut, which is 13 mil. And I should slacken her off. There we go. We'll just go ahead and uh, remove the tensioner because we're going to change it. And we'll go ahead and pull our belt off. That's it. So now that we crack this this pulley, this pulley can spin. As you can see. So, you don't really need to do this, but I'm just in the habit of giving this face a bit of a degrease and a bit of a clean because the pulley is held in place by pure friction because there's no keyway. And uh, we'll just get any debris away from the place. And we'll just get the pulley back on again, but keep it loose. So you want this pulley to be so that it can rotate, but you don't want it to be able to tilt, you know, like that. You don't want it to be able to rock, you know, and it's there, like that, yeah. So it's, it's a pretty decent fit on the end of the camshaft there. It's, 
So you want it to rotate like that, but not rock. So just nipped up with your fingers there. So we're in a position now, we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove this water pump. Bucket below and uh, I'll change the water pump and we'll come back whenever that's done. So a new water pump fitted and uh, these water pumps, it's just uh, sealed with uh, RTV instant gasket. So you need to make sure your surfaces are, are spotless. So I went ahead and fitted the belt with our crank locking tool still in place. You never have to take it off. You put the belt on the untensioned side and with the calm wheel able to move, you're able to pull the belt round and slip it onto the tensioner. Now, you're probably not gonna be able to see me tensioning this because my, my arm's probably gonna be on the road, but uh, I'll show you it on the old tensioner. So this wee tool that you get in the kit is in the two wee holes and you bring it around like that. And whenever you do that, you can see the slack getting brought up by the movement of the cam wheel. So that, that's why we do this with the cam wheel loose and able to turn freely. If you didn't loosen that cam wheel up, then you're not gonna get this tension correctly. And you're gonna really struggle getting that belt on as well. So what I'm doing there is, this is the old tensioner. So this is our wee tool, and it goes into those two wee holes there. And you basically line that notch up with that notch up, and then tighten your knot up. Right, with our tensioner notches lined up down there, and uh, our tensioner nut then nipped up and torqued, and the, the the torque specs in this, I'll tell you after I do this here, with the torque specs. So, uh, we need to tighten this calm wheel up. So, whatever you do, don't forget to tighten this calm wheel up. Because if you take your locking kit, lock kit out and uh, try and rotate it, obviously the camshaft will not rotate. So, it'll just spin freely. So, you need to remember to do this. Now, you must, again, you must counter hold. So, the camshaft locking key, uh, kit is still in, in the camshaft. So that's so the camshaft doesn't move, you know, from obviously. Well, it's kind of sort of obvious, isn't it? So we're gonna counteract the motion. And uh, so you need to get set up for this. Make sure you're not gonna slip or anything like that. Sounds pretty good. So that beep there went off at 120 newton meters. The specification for that nut is 108 to 132. So I just took a mid range there at 120. You do not need to change that bolt. Uh, it is not a stretch bolt. And similarly, you do not need to change the nut on the tensioner. It's a special nut, you, you know, don't put any other nut on it. So, that's us tightened, take a lock and cuts out. So both lock and tools are off, and we do the obligatory spin around from the crank. Uh, crank wheel two rotations, that's a full engine cycle. And with the spark plugs to the end, you have to beat the compression a wee bit. But that's okay. So here's what we've taken off it. Uh, so what I say was on the car, about 74,000 miles or something along those lines. So this is 
the original belt. So that's a, a Lancia logo there. No manufacturer on it, so whether they make it themselves or not, I'm not sure. What does that say? Or made in Nias? Oh, I can't make it out. But uh, so not tea bag on the back side there, but uh, on the front side. There is a few crackers appearing here and there. And the Vassar Pumpa. Um, that seemed all right. Not too bad. No real. As I said earlier, the, the bearings sometimes go in these and these can carry them up about the place. The only thing is a couple of these, if you look at the couple of these stud holes here, they're kind of rusty. So that she maybe was starting to try and leak a wee bit. But the, well, this is the auxiliary belt or, you know, alternator belt, whatever you want to call it. So I mark these uh, direction of rotation. You know, so if you are going to put them back on again, you know, that's a that's a good good practice to put them on, in the way that they've been pulled, you know, in the direction that they've been pulled. So that's what that we are was for, and that's uh, Fiat Partrains, in Italia, and uh, well, she ain't going back on again, because she's there's a few cuts in it here and there, so. New one I am for all the pricing. Engine rotated twice clockwise. Get my crank back on again. That's uh, the top bolt in there again. And we got our camshaft job in here. We'll just keep these. Are we hardless. Just so it lines up a wee bit easier for us, you know. So, let me see. You're gonna go off. Just fell in, boys. Just fell in. So, we'll lose there a wee bit loose on it there. That'll, uh, that'll let us thread this in dead easy. So, that is perfectly tanned. I uh, don't really need to tighten them up, but we'll just check her. So there's our, our tensioner notch lining up there. So if you do spin this round, and this has happened before with, well, it happens with time belts all the time. If you do tension, if you do, whenever you do spin around and you know, the belt fans, it's sort of tension, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, so with rotating her around a couple of times, sometimes that might move slightly on you, you know. So it's just a matter of backing that off, putting her back into position again, tighten that back up again. I think I tightened it to 24 new meters, did I say? 24. And, uh, you know, take your locking kits off, spin around her a couple of times. And, uh, you know, just to get that precise, if it's slightly either side of the notch, you know, wouldn't worry too much about it. Not a biggie, but, uh, you know, this one here's spot on. Well, boys, that's about all I'm going to film on this one. Just build her back up again, covers on, engine mount on, vacuum pump on, whatever bracketry there is and wire and, and all that, uh, carry on. So this video has just been really about you know, the proper way to tension uh, these type of belts with an unkeyed cam and to get it perfectly in time. If you don't do that, it's not going to be perfectly in time, you know, and you're going to really, really struggle putting the belt on, as I said. But uh, yeah, so engine mount on and all that, I'll carry on. There's a wee bit more work I have to do to this car, so uh, I have to take the front of it. It needs, the car needs a radiator, but uh, yeah. But we'll get her uh we'll get her back up again up and uh give her a start up before we go ahead with that 
So anyway, that's it. That's all I'm going to film. As I said, many thanks for watching. All the best. And...